In this video, we take a look back at the fighter that I believe is the most complete fighter in boxing history. When a champion is as physically talented as this man is, his main opponent is himself. Salvador Sanchez. The best fight I ever saw, yeah. honestly, yeah. skill-wise, yeah. was a guy by the name of Salvador Sanchez. Sanchez is the type of fighter he doesn't need to see an opponent because he's able to adapt to any style, which makes him a very unique fighter. Every single time I watch Salvador Sanchez, I am mesmerized by how great he is. Sanchez just seems to understand boxing at a level that very few people do. He has breathtaking skills. And in his very early 20s, he was the pound for pound king. Pound for pound, the greatest boxer around today. Sanchez first came to prominence in his world title challenge against Danny Little Red Lopez. This would be the first time boxing fans would realize they were witnessing sheer greatness. Hall of Fame trainer Angelo Dundee warned everyone that the underdog Sanchez had a lot of talent. I make it a very difficult fight. Sanchez punch, punches with both hands. He's a very difficult opponent for Danny Red Lopez. The first round set the tone of the fight. And we're underway with first round action scheduled for 15. From the outset, Sanchez began taking Lopez apart. Good right hand and a scoring combination from Sanchez. With remarkable poise for a 21 year old. He really looks like a very mature young man. Sanchez displays everything you want to see in a great fighter in this fight. Psych the kid, but he's getting hit with really tough, tough shots. Now can he survive it? But he was no puncher. This kid is a puncher. Everybody realizes pretty early that this fight is a clinic. Notice the amazing head movement and upper body movement of Sanchez. He has such a fluid and unique style. He comes in there, it's either you or him. The jab is also a constant weapon. Final seconds of this first round. Salvador Sanchez, the challenger from Mexico City. Sanchez is the highest level of technician. Once he has his timing down, it's like target practice. First round action, and Sanchez has certainly been the aggressor and has scored heavily. From very early on in the fight, it was clear that Sanchez had Lopez timed perfectly. Lopez was a pressure fighter whose main attributes were toughness and heart. Notice how he just can't handle the head movement of Sanchez. Every time they get into exchanges, Sanchez gets the better of it. With the jab consistently finding its mark, Sanchez began countering Lopez very hard. Sanchez does a lot of high-level stuff. Notice how he lands this lead left hook to the body, and notice how he sets up a perfect inside uppercut off his head movement. Good sharp left again. Lopez's right eye was really starting to swell up at this point. Sanchez would like to use all of it. He moves awfully well. Sanchez continued to demonstrate next-level movements and his very effective jab. Sanchez was just unable to miss Lopez with virtually everything he threw. Good right hand. The right hand was really landing cleanly throughout the fight. Right hand again. Sanchez can't let his Mexican hang out. He's got to play a cat and mouse game. Fox will go trade with Lopez or he's going to get knocked out. Lopez was a warrior though and he never gave up trying. But Lopez did not go down. Lopez just sustained a cut over his right eye. It doesn't look bad, but it just opened up. Right hand landed. But he must have been thinking to himself, damn, this guy is good. Red Lopez is hurt for the first time. First time I see him this hurt. Lopez takes another combination from Sanchez. 
The eye damage on Lopez was looking very significant, and it didn't look like he was going to make it the distance. Another right hand from Sanchez, throwing them well, very straight. Riddle with the champion taking most of the punishment. Sanchez was now in full flow, and the right hand was landing repeatedly on Lopez. Oh, he's in real bad trouble, Tim. Survival test of all time to go. This kid is hurting with every punch now. It's pretty insane how Lopez just walks through some of these punches. That's right. Fighting a great fight, smart fight. He's but he was getting hurt. The great champion Lopez. Sanchez rocked Lopez back once more with a left hand. Gallon Ayala suffered a broken nose earlier in that fight. But Tim, young 21 year old kid. He's having everything his own way. He's winning the fight, but he's got to fight a cat and mouse game. Notice how beautiful this uppercut is. That right uppercut was a devastating punch that kid threw right now. Some of Sanchez's work just makes you speechless. Well, he has been well trained. The doctor was taking a closer look at the eye of Lopez, and it looked like it was now a question of whether the doctor would stop the fight or Lopez would end up getting knocked out. Keep in mind, Sanchez was an unknown underdog, and to come in and produce a performance like this at the age of 21 was just unbelievable. The beatdown continued. Sanchez was able to land counter after counter. One thing Lopez had was elite durability, but he wasn't the best, technically. Notice he just can't get out of the way of the right hand. The unique movements and next level skills of Sanchez are insane. Lopez on the attack, somewhat desperately here in round seven. After the doctor took one more look at the eye. Dr. Lake has allowed the champion to continue once more. Sanchez started opening up with slick punches and hurt Lopez again. As I watch Sanchez fights, I keep coming back to his poise. He never loses focus. The commentators understand what a great trait this is to have, especially in a 21-year-old fighter. The difference is this kid is fighting the fight. He's tall, he's moving away. He's not giving him a chance to land the big bomb. Doesn't seem to be bothering him at all. Look at him jab coming out the ropes. This kind of fights so are long distance fights where you're taking your licking. They don't do nobody no good. The champion, uh, how much of an effect has it had? Big effect. He's the fight was becoming uncomfortable to watch at this point. Hagler and Lucy Tamani. That's right. On our cards, we've given only two to Lopez. Sanchez scoring with a combination. Right hand of the cheekbone of Lopez from Sanchez. Another one. Lopez had taken a brutal beating, and it was obvious to everyone watching that he had no chance of winning. Sure, and he is ranked number one by the WBC, and he is showing why in this fight. Lopez can't wait on this kid because he's going to just take a bad lick all night long. Ten. Everybody realized the end was near. Sanchez ramped it up and started looking for the finish now. Lopez was in trouble. Rest a little bit. A lot of blood from that cut over the right eye. Solid right hand. That light, the left eye, you can't see the right hand coming, actually, Tim. Good point, because he just took another one and we yeah, had a good look at it. Yeah, can't see it coming. Uh, and this kid's smart enough to take advantage of it. He is hurt, isn't he? He's hurt. 
No right. chance. The referee's going to stop it. The referee's going to stop it. That's it. There is a new featherweight world champion, WBC version Salvador Sanchez hey, yeah. from Mexico no, City yeah. as referee. Vol I thought this stoppage was good. Lopez had zero chance, and the accuracy of Sanchez's punches meant he was taking a brutal beating. The right hand did the whole job, Tim. Sanchez was now a hero in Mexico, and with one performance, he had created arguments amongst boxing fans as to who was the best fighter pound for pound in the sport. How can a 21-year-old fight such a brilliant fight strategically? Boxearlo así con rapidez, sin quedarse en las cuerdas y sobre todo con inteligencia. With a lot of intelligence, staying off the ropes and boxing. And this young man astounding nearly everybody in the boxing world with his brilliant fight plan, the way he was able to execute it. Sanchez took on 44-1. and one. Ruben Castillo next. Castillo came in with a good strategy, fighting on the back foot and not giving Sanchez many countering opportunities. Notice how he lands his left hook in his counter combinations and then moves away from Sanchez. Castillo. I told you this kid's a classy fighter. His this fight showed a weakness in Sanchez. He was never the best against boxers. He really shone against sluggers, who he could counterpunch into knots. Castillo was a good boxer. Castillo there, leading that exchange. But despite boxers not being his preferred wheelhouse, Sanchez was still too good for them. Look at him go. Notice Sanchez gets a lot of punches off his jab. Beautiful right hand here by Sanchez. Sanchez began getting his jab working. His vaunted right lead began finding its mark. Sanchez was now in his groove and winning the fight clearly. Oh, good right by Sanchez. He's been looking to get that in there. And Sanchez hurting Castillo at that point. He had found his timing for the one-two combination. There it was. Snap Castillo's head back. And Sanchez is now catching him. There, you saw the right lead. He was now also letting combinations go. It was clear that Sanchez was in control of the fight. But you can see now how you get a sense of the solidity of Sanchez as a fighter. How he fights so well mentally, so intelligently. Adhering to plan, not wasting punches, not missing as many. But Castillo continued to fight off the back foot and occasionally land some punches. And scoring! No quit in this kid! Castillo had a good strategy in this fight. Let's remember that Sanchez is still only 21 at this point. When it came to the championship rounds, Sanchez raised his game again. The player aggressor is Sanchez. Sanchez finished strong landing some good right hands. Two Mexican judges scored. You just saw Sanchez go up beautifully, doubling up on the right. As I said, an excellent round for Sanchez. Castillo missing and caught by the counterpuncher. At the end, it was a clear win for Sanchez. But the winner is still the champion, a purposeful, solid fighter with a superb right lead. He used the left effectively, and he was the winner. Sanchez is, in effect, a local hero, and he has, comes off for a remarkable year. The bell for round one, let's pick up with the action. Mandatory challenger Juan Laporte came out very fast. Sanchez in the blue trunks. He is a superb counterpuncher. But Sanchez's counterpunching was on point early. How quick Sanchez's hands are. But Laporte tries to be the aggressor and pulls him against the ropes. It was clear that Sanchez had faster hands. 
Quick combination by Sanchez. Sanchez established his jab in 1-2 at range and notice these beautiful corner body shots when Laporte attacks. Laporte trying to carry the battle. Sanchez against the ropes. The fourth round was good for Laporte. One thing I really love about Sanchez is that he was one of the few fighters in history who kept his perfect technique and composure after getting hit by a big shot. Sanchez appears, oh, a good right by Laporte, you just saw it. He had this uncanny ability to always stay calm. See that right get in there? And immediately get himself out of trouble. Other fighters panic, swing wildly, hang on for dear life. Not Salvador Sanchez. Sanchez began taking control of the fight with his jab from the outside and his tremendous head and upper body movement. By Laporte, not in evidence in the last two rounds. Notice how Sanchez mixes in some inside fighting. Slipping blows, ducking in a good right by Sanchez. Certainly Sanchez dominated in that exchange. Sanchez is now beginning to hurt him. It is happening quickly, but you can see Sanchez dominating this fight now. His versatility was his biggest strength as a fighter. Oh, there's that right lead that hurt Laporte. Laporte's left eye appears to be swollen and swan shutting quickly. This is where Sanchez can kill you when he starts to go to the belly. His counterpunching was still on point and Sanchez was just flowing now. He will take that left eye apart if he can. It's an ugly, brutal business, but it's the way it is. Steady work now with that Sanchez left. The fight in a pattern. There's that right that's so punishing. Seems to fight the same way in every fight, Sanchez. Starts very slowly. Then begins to take over. That's what you call counter punching. You saw Laporte miss, and quickly Sanchez was in there. That right scored well by Sanchez. But Laporte had no quit in him. He was hurt. Laporte connected and hurt Sanchez. He continued to put in maximum effort. Notice this nice one-two from Laporte. Sanchez, as usual, just takes the punches like nothing happened. Combination, in fact, following with the right. Laporte also landed a beautiful inside uppercut. Right his way off them. And he came up for the beauty of an uppercut that stung Sanchez. A beauty. Sanchez is like granite. Which Sanchez again took like nothing happened. For the uppercut now. There it was, and you saw that head of Sanchez's go up. Good left and right by Laporte. No quitting this kid. Sanchez was in control of the fight, though. Sanchez dominated. And he had always looked to be in command. His jab continued to work, and his right-hand lead was starting to come into play more and more. Sanchez was a 15-round fighter and knew how to pace himself to do the 15 rounds. In his longer fights, he always won the championship rounds. Concentration in Sanchez's eyes. How purposeful he is. Sanchez just in total charge now. Laporte would land one more right hand. Meanwhile, Laporte with a quick right. But now it was all Sanchez as he closed out the fight. Right there. Right and then the left. There he was hurt there as he was staggered back into the ropes. An inner resources to manifest movement. But he got caught there in ring center. Still fighting back as you see. There's that right. He was starting to show off his insane defensive skills to the delight of his fans. And you can see it. Oh, there are such good fighters around in the lower weight classifications. And he continued to land his right hand on the bloodied and bruised Laporte. In the end, it was a clear win for Sanchez. And still, the well, of course, if you watch this,
this fight, you couldn't have been surprised. It was an easy decision by one of the classiest fighters, inch for inch and pound for pound in the world today. He fought a gallant kid, a kid who deserves a lot of credit, Juan Laporte. But the kid was simply outclassed. From the fifth round on, Sanchez did what he wanted. 42 and 1. Roberto Castanin was totally outclassed and stopped with a nice left hook inside. He is undefeated in his professional career. Introducing Wilfredo Gomez. Sanchez was a 3 to 1 underdog as he took on the fearsome puncher Wilfredo Gomez next. Gomez had been destroying everyone at 122 pounds and was unbeaten with all of his wins ending by knockout. Notice the counter right hands that Sanchez lands inside. Gomez is a knockout puncher. He believes in his power, so he goes right at Sanchez. But that just plays into Sanchez's hands because he is the ultimate counterpuncher. Sanchez poured on the pressure, but did it with skill. The right hand couldn't miss Gomez, and he almost went again. To this day, I'm still shocked that Gomez made it out of the first round. It was immediately apparent that Gomez was never going to be able to beat Sanchez because he had to attack and Sanchez would be able to counter him. I don't think any front foot slugging type of guy would ever beat Sanchez. I don't think any featherweight in history would have beaten Sanchez anyway. Notice the timing on Sanchez's right hand here. Gomez's eye had started swelling, and the fight was just a clear domination by Sanchez. One thing I noticed in this fight was that Sanchez was just able to land the right hand at will. His counter punching was really good in this fight. Look at this great defensive work with his back to the ropes. Whenever Gomez did land anything clean, Sanchez just shrugged it off instantly and got back to boxing. There was a poetic moment just before the final round where Gomez's eyes are swollen in his corner and you just see the contrast in Sanchez's corner. He looks like he's just chilling at a restaurant waiting for his meal. Sanchez closed the show with some pressure combinations on the ropes. Three, it's four. I don't know if Gomez can make it. I don't think he can make it. He won't make five. He's up. He's 
With this fight, Sanchez became the recognized pound-for-pound -pound number one in boxing, and he also became a crossover star. Everyone knew who Salvador Sanchez was now. Boxing is a national sport in England. We invented the sport many years ago, you know, and uh, the same as we invented the language. Larry Merchant, let me ask you. People are starting to recognize Salvador Sanchez as an outstanding champion. Essentially the same question I just asked Ray. Do you look for a letdown tonight? When a champion is as physically talented as this man is, his main opponent is himself. Sanchez is the type of fighter he doesn't need to see an opponent because he's able to adapt to any style which make him a very unique fighter. Sanchez defended his title against British challenger Pat Cowdell next. Six pounds, Salvador Sanchez. Sanchez established his jab early. Has a very stiff left jab. Sanchez all business in the boxing ring. Sanchez very active, bobbing and weaving. Sanchez really looking every bit the part of a champion. I believe Sal sometimes fought to the level of his opposition, but the better his opponent got, the higher he rose his game. After the Gomez fight, Sanchez was very well known now. Going downstairs and then coming upstairs with the left hands, and a fine uppercut right there also. Sanchez invested to the body early, knowing it would pay dividends later on. Notice the amazing head movement from Sanchez as he is throwing punches on the front foot. You just don't see this level of skill in modern day boxers. Notice how Sanchez sets up this right hand to the head with body shots. Notice there is very little power put into the body shots. Sanchez was just setting up the right hand to the head. And here is what I was saying earlier about Sanchez fighting to the level of his opponent. Look how comfortable he is here. He's just fighting at a measured pace and totally in control, but he's not pushing a pace himself. Cowdell, you can see a, a reddening on the back of Cowdell. Cowdell really unable to get untracked offensively here. Anytime Sanchez opened up, he was able to utilize his movement to get punches through. Took a right hand to the side of the head right there, and that was the first punch that might have hurt Pat Cowdell. Let's take a look at the exchange in the round when Sanchez landed his most effective punch. A short left followed by a right. And hurt him. Why doesn't he just go right to him and, and, and withstand anything? The jab continued to work. And a straight left scores to the chin. And Sanchez was placing left hooks to the body and head. There is a left hand that scores on the side of the face of Cowdell. One thing I really like about Sanchez is his timing on the right hand. Here, he lands a beautiful lead right hand. Best punch of the fight as he moves forward, almost like uh, the grim death that he represents as a featherweight champion. A very good right hand. Notice how he lands hard right hands off his jab here. Cowdell is starting to get beaten up. Sanchez's experience was starting to come through now. He was stepping up his pace in the championship rounds. Notice the counter uppercut here. There's an uppercut that scores by the champion on Cowdell. Chopping right hand sends Cowdell backward. And another right hand in the side of the face and Cowdell is hurt. Sanchez starts using the uppercut more now. Salvador Sanchez begins to impose himself on his opponent. 
Sanchez seems to know when the end of the round is, is coming, Ray. He, he usually starts a flurry with about 20 to 30 seconds left. Sanchez still completely unmarked. Blood showing again on the face of Pat Caldell. Body punches are taking their toll on Pat Caldell. Sanchez was putting on a show now. Here, he is landing big shots with the left hand. By Sanchez, and another left. That punch really hurt. And Caldell holds on. Caldell's days and eyes got worse. This has to be it. Blood now showing very predominantly. To the commentators and crowd, the only question at this point was whether Sanchez would win on point or get the knockout. But did the judges feel the same way? After landing some good straight shots, Sanchez raised his game and landed a beautiful right hand to get a knockdown. Caudel shows a lot of heart to get up and somehow finish the fight on his feet. Notice Sanchez doesn't really throw a jab. He just reaches out with the left and blinds Caudel from seeing the right. See how he holds the left hand there so Caudel can't see the right? I really did not think that the man could get up from that. 145 to 144, Caudel. I've seen some bad scoring, but this is one of the worst. A judge, who must have been a close relative of Caudill, scored the fight for Caudill. Thankfully, the other judges had it wide to Sanchez. We understand that you would like to fight the lightweight champion Alex Aguayo next. Is that true? Tenemos entendido que Aguayo, el campeón mundial de las 135 libras. Claro que sí. Yes. There's no doubt that Sanchez, like some of our other champions, dominates his division. He is indeed a big little man in the sport of boxing. Perhaps pound for pound, the greatest boxer around today. He's the greatest hero of Mexico. Sanchez took on contender Rocky Garcia next. That a stoic expression. He is all business in a boxing ring. And he flashes a smile to his supporters here in Dallas. Weighing 126 pounds, Salvador Sanchez. Garcia fought entirely on the back foot, which was a good strategy. There's a right hand that caught Garcia on the side of the head. I don't think any fighter should want to give a master counterpuncher like Sanchez anything to work with by fighting on the front foot. In this fight, Sanchez started off fast, finding a home for the right hand. After having absorbed three good right hands in the middle. Right hand by Sanchez again, backs Garcia up. And Garcia now in danger as his knees buckle from the left hand. It was a right and then a left by Sanchez. Garcia backs off now. And there, and now he's coming in with that big overhand right. Notice the high level combination here, starting with the body shot and coming up top with the right. And a right hand, and again the legs buckle on Garcia. Garcia gets off the ropes. Garcia was out of his league, but he was mitigating the damage by fighting a very negative fight. The fight was a domination from Sanchez and a survival mode job by Garcia. Outclass now, and the margin is going wider and wider. Watching Sanchez going to work like this is truly awesome. A left and a right. Pat Caldell as well. That left hand with a good punch. There's another one in several combinations this time. Another right hand. And a left and a right behind it. Neutral corner. Sanchez again banging away at Garcia. There's a right hand. Bombs into the head of Garcia again, but again the lead. Sanchez continued to dominate, and the commentators put it best when they described the difference in class. You know, this is like watching a Kentucky Derby horse going up against a $7,500 claimer. Sanchez worked his combinations in the championship rounds and was easing to a decision win when he got caught with two clean right hands. Once again, Sanchez just took the punches like nothing happened. I think this fight probably confirms that Sanchez was a guy who coasted in fights that he didn't feel threatened in. 
He usually established his superiority early in fights, and if the opponent threatened him in any way, he would pour it on. But if the opponent was in survival mode and posing no threat, Sanchez could be guilty of coasting to a win. Sanchez, 141, Garcia, the winner and still featherweight champion of the world, Salvador Sanchez. Well, Salvador Sanchez, the unanimous decision. Next up for Sanchez was a fight with future Hall of Fame fighter, Azuma Nelson. This would be Sanchez's last fight. Notice the ovation he gets. One loss, one draw with 30 knockouts. From Mexico City, Mexico, the World Boxing Council featherweight champion, here is Salvador Sanchez. Salvador Sanchez. Sanchez. This fight is a classic. Nelson's record was 13-0, and he was an up-and-coming fighter. Sanchez was an experienced veteran of 44 fights under his belts. But what might be surprising is that Nelson was six months older than Sanchez at the time of this fight. Nelson took the fight on two weeks' notice. Nelson came in with a lot of confidence. He took the style of the front foot counterpuncher. He is willing to engage in exchanges with Sanchez. Notice that Nelson tries to counter everything Sanchez is doing. Nelson had a very good start in the fight. He was on top early. He also had a lot of confidence. Notice the Ali shuffles he is doing. This is a very high level fight. Two very good counter punchers. Sanchez in his prime. Nelson close to his fighting prime, but physically, he's in his prime. Sanchez started to have his moments, and he was warming up into the fight. He was having success avoiding Nelson's shots and going to the body. But the determination of Nelson was unbelievable on this night. Notice the left to the body there by Nelson. I think he might have hurt Sanchez a bit with that punch. I think Nelson also thought he hurt Sanchez to the body because he started pouring it on. Brutal body hooks. Nelson is used to being the alpha male in the ring. He's not taking a backward step tonight. Sanchez is confused. Yes, he is. And what to make out of this kid. I don't think he expected this much in front of him. And Azuma Nelson has been a pleasant surprise. Nobody knew because nobody had seen him before. And Azuma Nelson does not come from a poor family. Larry comes from a father who's a millionaire. Despite Nelson having a good start, 
Sanchez remained unfazed. He got to work with his combinations. Sanchez knew he needed to raise his level, and that's exactly what he did. Notice Nelson doesn't clinch when hurt. I don't think there was a single clinch in this entire fight. Nelson was in exceptional shape. He was running on instinct now. But that instinct was propelling him forward to just throw punches, and his conditioning was helping him recover. At the end of the round, Nelson walked back to the wrong corner. I think he was badly hurt. Remember when I said Sanchez fought to the level of his opponents and perhaps he coasted a bit when he felt no threat? Well, I think we see that in this fight. Sanchez feels a threat from Nelson because Nelson is coming at him as a front foot counterpuncher. Sanchez can pick his spots now, and he does with a beautiful left hook. Nelson is like a Terminator now. He's just coming forward and throwing combinations first, or firing a Sanchez when Sanchez throws. Notice Nelson once again walks to the wrong corner. As the fight moved towards the championship rounds, Sanchez raised his game and upped his pace. But the great Nelson showed he wasn't done yet. His determination and willingness to exchange sees him land a counter left hand. And I think Sanchez is badly hurt here. What an amazing comeback from Nelson. Sanchez showed that he had the best poker face in boxing, along with being as cool as ice while he is under pressure. Nobody really knew who was winning at this point. He 
feel like Sanchez was winning, especially with the knockdown. But Nelson had been on the front foot and showed tremendous countering ability. Sanchez got back on track by going back to basics and maintaining his composure. Sanchez regains control of the fight with his jab and defensive skills. He goes to the body while using his matrix-like movement to avoid punches. But Nelson just wouldn't be denied. He kept pushing himself forward and landed some good punches. This was the biggest moments of the fight. Sanchez couldn't let Nelson get the upper hand. A beautiful two-punch combination with the same hand really hurt Nelson. There it is. He almost went down from it. Sanchez shows he's one of the truly elite fighters who always finds a way to get on top. This is why I love Sanchez. He's the perfect combination of technical boxer and Mexican warrior. With only two rounds remaining, it looked like Sanchez would close out the fight and get the victory. But somehow, Nelson harnessed the energy to engage in an all-out assault on Sanchez now. He's got a hard figure in his body, this kid. Yes, he does. It was Nelson on the front foot and Sanchez trying to outbox him and outlast him. The action was fierce and Nelson wanted to keep going at the bell. In the final round, Nelson decided he would rather get knocked out trying to win than lose on points. He just went at Sanchez like a lunatic. This played into Sanchez's hands. The master counterpuncher picked his spots, landing beautiful left hooks. Nelson was in serious trouble. It was the left hook of Sanchez that got the job done. Nelson had nothing left at all at this point in the fight. He was just catching punches and trying to fight back, trying to keep from going down. Sadly, just three weeks after this fight, the 23-year-old Sanchez would be dead. Sanchez loved cars, and he died on the road when his car went into the back of a truck. I think it's immensely sad that he died so young. I know a lot of kids out there, you know, love him as well as everybody else out here. And it just, it's bad to see a person, you know, like that go away. Came in and took the title from me, and I consider myself a, a pretty good champion at the time. And he came and he showed me he was better. And to hear that he was he's dead at the age of 23 was, uh, was hard to take. My overall opinion on Sanchez is that he was an elite fighter who could do everything in there. It's very clear that he understood boxing on a level that very few people understand the sport. Sanchez also always found a way to win and looked sensational in his most important fights. He had the highest ring IQ in boxing history. His stamina was on par with the great Rocky Marciano, a solid 15-round stamina, and he could punch non-stop for that entire 15-round period if need be. He could box, move, counter, slip, go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. He could do absolutely everything in a boxing ring. He literally looks like he is in the Matrix. There's nothing he couldn't do in there. He went 4-0 with four knockouts against Hall of Fame fighters who were in or near their primes. 
I rate Sanchez as the most complete featherweight of all of them, and I put him as the number one featherweight of all time. I also rate Sanchez as the greatest Mexican fighter of all time.